Hi, everyone. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us for our webinar today. My name is Justin Lee. I'm a lead product marketing manager here at Product Board. I'm super excited to be joined by Marika here today. Uh, with an interest in building human-centric technology, Marika joined the software tech scene eight years ago. She has worked with product teams at a number of startups and scale-ups where she's learned how to do product and how not to. Since then, Marika has become a passionate product leader with a focus on people. She's an advocate for conscious leadership and servant leadership. She currently works as head of product at a Danish startup, Onomondo. Welcome, Marika. Yes, thank you so much, Justin, for the lovely introduction. And of course, nice to, to know that there is also a crowd of people watching me right now. Um, Yes, um, so let me just dive in. I'm gonna share my screen because I have some slides prepared for us today. All right, and here we go. So today, as you know, um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about storytelling. So storytelling is, um, I think, a skill that is being seen as very, very relevant or maybe even critical when it comes to product management or leadership. Um, and I think it's it's very important when we're communicating the value of our products or services out to the external world, to our customers. But I think that it's also like a very, very crucial tool in our toolbox when we're actually communicating the value of products as a function to our internal organization. So I'm uh, today taking the stance that storytelling can be very, very powerful um, to create also a strong product culture internally where you're at. Um, a little bit of uh, insight into the agenda for today and um, what you have been signing up for. Um, so first, I want to go a little bit more into detail on why we are here and why you should listen to me today. Um, then diving into the arts or science of storytelling, um, depending on, on how you see it. Then I'm going to go and um, actually give you some more generic um, recommendations on how you can tell a story that is actually meaningful and that will hopefully inspire action um, to whomever the audience is you're telling it to. But then I also want to turn it around and actually give you some very concrete examples um, of different scenarios that should hopefully be very common in the life of a product person. Um, and where storytelling will, will really, really help you. Then of course, a couple of takeaways. Um, and then I think for me, the most exciting part of this, actually your questions and diving into what you wanna know today. Yeah, so telling a little bit about why, why are we here? Um, I think again, that um, storytelling is pretty much everywhere. Um, it's not only part of the fields of products or product management, um, it's part of our culture, it's part of us being human beings. Um, but with that, it's also some sort of um, buzzword that's, that's very, very fluffy and has been thrown into kind of like the skills you need to have in order to make it or break it as a product manager. Same as, for example, stakeholder management. And um, while I was growing as a product manager, um, I was kind of trying to figure out, okay, how can I actually up that skill in my career? And it's really, really tough, right? Because where to even start from that? It's basically saying, okay, you need to become better at communicating. And of course, we can read a lot of books about it. We can go into the details of rhetorics and how to actually build up a story. Um, but that, of course, takes a lot of time and it kind of leaves you a little bit lost um, with all these resources that are out there as well. So I actually um, wanted to have some sort of workshop series with my product team way back then. Um, and I actually didn't know where to start, like where, where can we actually hit it off to all become better as, as product people with this. Um, and that's when I said, okay, maybe we should kind of change the approach to this um, and try to find more concrete situations in our everyday life where storytelling will help to again, um, provide some sort of message to whatever audience we're having. In my case, as I mentioned before, um, I will choose scenarios where it is about, okay, what actually is product conveying that message and that story to the organization? How do we help 
how do we actually contribute, but also how do we actually work. Um, as Justin said, I'm um, head of products at a place called Onomondo. Um, so uh, fairly new in, in the leadership journey myself. I've been doing that now for um, one and a half years, but of course also still learning on, on how to tell the right story. So diving a little bit into the art and science of storytelling, because you could of course ask the question, why is storytelling important in the first place? And I think that goes back with, okay, because we are humans, and this is a topic that um, can easily become very nerdy, but I'm a huge fan also of, of cognitive science and the brain in general. Um, and I'm trying to take it as high level as possible because I'm not a neuroscientist myself. Um, but there is basically three reasons why we resonate with stories so much, especially when we're an audience. And that is that first of all, the stories simplify. So as you know, we're bombarded with so much information throughout our everyday life. Um, and our brain needs to understand what is actually the noise here and what is the important information that I need to filter out. And stories with its framework, that there is usually some sort of conflict or problem, and there is a buildup, and then there is a resolution, that's something that we can work with because we're very familiar with it. We have been listening to stories when we were kids. Um, in Germany, there is a lot of fairy tales that we love. And there is, of course, stories in, in our everyday lives, in movies, again, in our whole culture. But then I think there is also the emotional part to it. Um, and I think we as product people, we kind of have to decide sometimes, are we going with the analytical route, the rational route of presenting data? Um, but sometimes it's also good to say, okay, we need um, some, some action. We need to inspire action from what we're doing here. We need some alignment or buy-in to certain decision-making. And then it's sometimes also nice to actually engage on the emotional level, on that side of things. And that's where stories definitely come in um, because it usually creates some sort of understanding where I'm coming from. It also creates a lot of empathy for whatever I have to say. Um, and it makes it so that um, I also, when I am the storyteller, and I will get to that into a bit, have to think about, okay, what does the audience expect actually from the story that I'm telling today? And then, of course, stories are easy to remember. Um, same with, with a slide deck. I could come probably with, with a lot of numbers, a lot of studies, research has shown. But in the end, stories are usually easier to remember. And that is just also how our brain works, um, because it's just easier to retain information when it comes in a certain framework. So that's the reason why storytelling in, in every kind of field is important and also to us as, as human beings, of course. Now I want to dive into kind of like tying it back a little bit to, to products as a field, of course. But again, all this uh, advice that I'm going to give now, I think, is probably um, relevant for, for a lot of other fields as well. The first thing is that uh, we have to know that whenever we are telling stories, um, we have to kind of be, be realistic here. And usually, first of all, no one has time to hear these stories. And also not everyone seems to be interested in these stories. That's usually in a very high paced startup environment, the, the kind of the case. So the first thing that I can say is whenever you're trying to build up your story is starting out with a purpose. So same thing as I was kind of trying by bringing us into a context. And again, what, what you are getting out of this presentation here today is to bring that context also to the audience that you're talking to. Why should they care about this story at the moment? Um, what is it that they can actually take away from the story, right? So um, it's not only my game today that I'm, that I'm saying these things and having some sort of monologue here, but hopefully you will get some actionable insights also into um, what you can do better in your work life. And then, of course, what action do you want to inspire them to do? Um, and I think that's just also very important because usually there is some sort of next action, next steps that we need um, whenever we're taking the stage and telling a story. Um, the second part is then, of course, okay, people need to care, they need to listen, they need to be excited for this, but how do I make people actually relate 
to the story that I'm telling. And I think this is very important for products, especially in an organization that is maybe not that familiar with product yet, um, where maybe they're, you're the first hire um, or it's not very product led per se. And I think that's where we have to find out, okay, who actually is the audience and put yourself into their shoes a little bit more. Again, coming back to what is the context that they need to understand in order to, to, to um, have uh, insights. But then also, and I think that's kind of like a trap that we sometimes fall in, how much do I actually need to use the jargon of the audience, the terminology that they're familiar with? Um, because sometimes I think we believe that the more acronyms, the more fancy words we use, the more professional we are being perceived. Um, but I think it complicates things a lot. And it makes people to actually drop off and probably do something else on their phone while hearing about these things. Um, then again, how can we create empathy for your problem? Um, there's usually other departments in an organization, if it's marketing, if it's sales, and usually we need to understand their point of view first before we can actually come tell a story and try to convince them um, that there is a certain way to go. And then I think one thing that also helps is that we already anticipate a reaction from them. So in order to build up a strong story, which again is, is not just a monologue, we should create this dialogue and we should know that there will be feedback questions coming as much as I'm anticipating that from you right now as well. Um, and then the third part, and I am a fan of structure um, to an extent is of course, um, to, to build up a structure around the narrative that, you, that you're trying to convey here. Um, same with this uh, presentation that I'm giving today. I think I could have probably just done it very ad hoc, um, but I think I might have missed some parts of it. So what I did is basically built an outline for what I was trying to say. Because again, it's, it's sometimes very easy to lose the red threads and kind of the, the holistic view on what we're trying to say. Um, and again, there should be some sort of core message that can be taken away by the audience as well. Um, and again, sometimes we are very much excited about certain parts of our work. Other people might not. So instead of losing us um, ourselves in too much detail, um, we then know, okay, this is kind of like the three steps that I'm building into what I'm trying to do today. But as I said, I want to get a little bit more concrete than that. So what I'm doing now is basically taking four examples out of the life of a product person um, where we're trying to communicate certain things to different levels, starting out with the product team, can be uh, the designers, engineers, typical product trio, um, then moving onwards to communicating certain things to leadership and then also to the whole organization. Um, the first one, I think, is, is a tricky one in a lot of respects because it's, I think, a lot of people have different opinions, but that is product strategy. And I do believe that product strategy is one of our core um, tools or means to convey what we're doing and how we're prioritizing in product. Um, and here, I think the purpose is to explain to my team, for example, how we can attack this year's business goals and how that actually translates into opportunities in product. Um, and of course, that comes with certain requirements, right? Because if you don't have business goals, um, if you don't know the opportunities, then it's, of course, very, very tough to communicate product strategy because probably there is no strategy. Um, and I have been part of a lot of product organizations to know that that can be easily the case. So of course, this um, is a scenario where we have all of that in place and now just basically want to inform the team what we can do. And here I think comes back to what, what actually is the context. So um, when it comes to the team, not everyone knows why we would need another product strategy, right? I'm kind of like working on this task right now that's part of an initiative, have my Kanban boards in Jira. So why do we now need to have this abstract artifact that tells me certain things? Um, and I think that's just bringing them back to the loop that again, product strategy is our tool to actually prioritize, to know where we need to go, to know um, what's kind of like the, 
the right action to, to drive certain goals and impacts that we have. At the same time, I think it's also important to tie that back to the everyday life of your team because it shouldn't be too fluffy and too abstract. They should go out um, after listening to the story that they kind of know how that also impacts their life and their tasks and their, um, yeah, their, their, their everyday routine, I would say. Um, yet, I think it is important to be as concrete as possible. So I've been part of a lot of product strategy sessions, but we were listening in for two hours. There was a lot about values and mission statements, but no one really knew what that actually meant for myself. Um, but on the other side, I've also been part of some strategy sessions where people basically gave me a list of features and those were scoped out and we already had solutions. They were like, yep, please go ahead and build it feature factory over here. And I think there we would have to find the common ground where we are trying to be as concrete as possible, but also leave enough open answers for the team to figure out. So that they feel curious and intrigued to see, okay, how can we actually solve these problems? And then of course, a strategy can be quite overwhelming. It usually um, extends over a period of time. There might be a lot of things that you wanna achieve throughout the year. Um, and that's why we have to keep the team excited. Um, we need to build up that ownership um, that they want to get their hands dirty because they think these things make sense and they're important to what they're doing. So there is, again, the emotional part of the story that you should definitely um, plan for. Of course, the same way, anticipate objections. So um, especially the, the engineers in my team, they're quite critical, which is great. Um, so they will have questions, they will not understand everything you're saying, so just be ready for that and prepare for that. And um, last but not least, be consistent, because I've also been part of organizations that basically came up with a new strategy every so often, um, and then basically there is no direction or focus there anymore. So as much as you can show the strategy and tie it back to that, the better. Um, but it should, of course, um, not change every so often because then it's, then it's a different exercise. Um, another one that is quite tricky in, in some ways is communicating discovery insights. Um, and here I'm now taking kind of like communicating that to a leadership level because um, the, the purpose is that we want to promote the impact of discovery work um, and share knowledge around those practices. Um, and here again, kind of like the premise is that we are in a product organization that values discovery, which I know can be a privilege for, for some. Um, but yeah, well, we just want to know, okay, how can we justify that this is also the right way of doing things and how can people actually see the impact here? Um, and similar to, to what I said with a strategy, we need to still explain why we're doing discovery. Discovery can also be a very fluffy term, especially for leadership, um, so higher level stakeholders. Um, so we need to kind of like bring them into the story of, okay, this is just a way to manage risk for us, to make sure that we're not investing into the right things, to start building too early, you know, that kind of narrative as well. Then important is, of course, to synthesize the data that we're having into findings that are digestible and are more bite-sized. Um, I've seen it that people are so proud of their work that they basically take everything, all the data, um, all the scripts of interviews, and they kind of like put it on the desk of leadership and say like, yep, here you go. But of course, again, no one has the time and also expertise to, to go through that. So we have to make it into something that's relevant enough um, and that kind of like summarizes what we're doing here without overwhelming them. And that also means that we shouldn't go too much into detail. So again, we, we shouldn't just show them maybe um, our whole analysis of everything we've ever done. But at the same time, I think it is very important to still let the audience into your thought process. Um, an anecdote there where I think I was um, talking with my former CTO and we were basically going through a decision making that was based on some of the discovery I've done. 
And I was kind of like, yeah, I'm not going to go through the middle part. He's not going to understand. It's going to be too much. So just kind of presented him with the findings and the, the results. Um, and then he was like, yep, yeah, no, that's definitely not the right decision. We should probably go in a completely different direction because of ABC. And I was kind of like, ah, but I considered all of this. This was part of the thought process. And this was part of the methodology that I chose. So what I did is basically running him through the same presentation, but this time definitely giving him more context to how did I actually come to that conclusion. And it helped. And he was very much in line with the decisions that I made there. Um, I talked about data a little bit, um, and I think data is important. Data is also a language that a lot of other stakeholders speak. Um, so as much as we can tie back to that and not just say that this is our gut feeling, the better. Um, and then tying it back to the emotional level, um, I think it helps a lot if we can use some sort of quotes, even video snippets from some of the interviews that we've done, um, quotes from survey questions, et cetera, because that usually also creates a lot of empathy, some urgency. If you see people that have these problems and it's not just me reiterating on it. Uh, last but not least here, um, I think it is still important to, again, not just put it onto the table of that stakeholder and say, here you go, now please make your decisions yourselves. But to realize that we are some experts when it comes to this um, as product people. And here it definitely helps to sometimes just propose also solutions or decisions to take. As an example, you can see here um, our current Slack channel. And what we're trying to do here is um, basically getting more interest in for some discovery work that we're doing. So we created a Slack channel where every time there is some discovery going on, we're trying to pick out some thing that's, that could be relatable to the rest of the organization and just share it. Of course, always with a link to more information, um, but that should just spark the interest and of course also um, makes it more visible to the rest of the organization. Communicating product ideas, we're, we're staying on the leadership level here. Um, here, I think the purpose is that we've done some discovery and now we wanna get some buy-in from stakeholders around this opportunity um, and potentially also the solution that we wanna follow. Um, and at the same time, we also want to identify some of the unknowns because probably we have not thought about everything here. Um, and this is kind of like an exercise that I'm borrowing from, uh, from Amazon. Um, it's called the um, work backwards me methodology here. And I, I've really liked it because it usually takes something that's, again, quite difficult to relate to for the out from the outside perspectives into something that is, in the end, a story. So um, what they have been working with is that whenever you have an idea for a certain feature, you just start out by writing the press release. So something that usually is done, as you could say, almost the last step before you launch is just being put way, way before into the pipeline. And that is good because you are trying to be very, very customer centric. So you're trying to see that problem actually from the customer or prospect who's reading about this. While at the same time being also very specific about the problems that this solution um, is going to solve, how the customer can actually benefit. Um, these kind of things that we sometimes, if we don't have a very commercial background, seem to forget because we're too much in the nitty gritty also of the technical scope and requirements. It also teaches us to think about stuff like product naming, things that can be very confusing maybe because it has been internal naming um, where you need background knowledge. It means that we already ask, okay, who is the intended customer here? And again, you can even use quotes if you want to. Um, it can also be a nice exercise sometimes to, to put words into the mouth of, of other people. Um, and yeah, some go even as far as adding an FAQ section to it that can be rather technical. Um, and that is, I think, also nice to, to kind of poke holes into, okay, what have we actually not thought about? Now, this is, again, great to present to leadership because this is something they they read, right? It's, it's a press release. It's kind of like a familiar territory here. 
Um, and it's not just a spec document, which can be hard to interpret. Um, so it's usually a quite nice way to get their feedback and then of course revise and iterate on that. And then we have the lovely roadmap and communicating that. And in this case, I chose to communicate it to actually the whole organization because I think it's it's critical to, to any organization where products plays a huge part. Um, and here the purpose is to provide clarity around initiatives and how they will actually impact business goals. Um, again, as with everything, we need to explain the framework. I think roadmap is one term that has been misinterpreted um, by stakeholders a lot. It's not a timeline of deliverables with a set date, um, but it's rather a plan for us to achieve a certain goal. And there is always the risk of a roadmap changing with the knowledge that we're getting in over time. With the roadmap, I think it is very, very nice to be visual um, because it, again, simplifies things quite a lot. Um, at the same time, we should make it very, very simple. So um, whenever it comes to naming or unknown terms, I would definitely go with um, some terminology that it's more familiar, um, that can be things like tech debt, but again, also things like discovery, where people are a little bit adamant. Um, and then I think one of the most important things is that we need to connect the roadmap to our priorities, our strategy, and also the why. So I think that's kind of like the, the whole um, core of this exercise is to make people understand this is why we chose this or why we're choosing these things right now from what we know. And um, a shameless plug here because um, we're using Product Board and Product Board is actually a very, very cool tool to do all of these things. Uh, most importantly also because um, you can give access to a Product Board roadmap to pretty much anyone in your organization to view. So it kind of becomes the source of truth, which is super nice. Um, I've also been told that you can now create some, some videos with Loom on the site so that the story that you're telling maybe at a session can also be kind of um, asynchronously recorded and anyone who's, who's going in is getting a better understanding of what these items mean. We're also using kind of like the descriptions for each of these so that if you're coming in and you don't really know what, what is this project about, you can just read up on it as well. So it, it made our life a lot easier when it comes to this communication. Um, of course, again, there might be concerns, feedback questions coming in here, especially if people don't see the things they would have liked to see prioritized. Um, but again, that's why our argumentation for um, why this is the right way, what kind of strategy we have in place is so important. Um, and then I can just say, show this roadmap again and again and again and again, because people tend to forget. They tend to forget also everything that is already on the shoulders of um, the tech or product team. Um, so I will pull this out basically whenever I can um, to, to just let everyone know, okay, this is also something that's reliable and that we're working with instead of just this weird artifact. Okay, I'm coming to the to the end of, of this and just want to give you a couple of takeaways. Again, we could read tons of books around this topic. And I think you, you definitely should because there are some cool resources out there. But I think it might, again, um, is definitely worth it to take a little bit of a different approach. And that's to just get started immediately on this. Um, what you need is, again, to find scenarios where you want to bring product closer to either your team, executive level, to the whole business, whoever you need to, to, to tell the story to. And that can be anything. I know that communicating roadmap in front of a lot of people might not be the reality of all the people that are listening here right now. But um, that can be like little things where, where it just helps to, to just pause, reflect on what's the best story to tell here. And then we have to put ourselves in the shoes um, of the audience, include their reality in, in our story or else we'll lose interest and we will not inspire the action that we need. Um, and in the end, it comes down to understanding and alignment. Um, so making it as simple as possible for, for people is, is definitely recommended. 
And then of course the story is not a monologue, shouldn't be. So there needs to be a space for, for dialogue and, and feedback as well. Yes. And I think uh, that this is my last slide. Thank you so much for listening to me. And now I'm just uh, very, very curious on, on questions from your side. I'm gonna stop sharing. Awesome. Thank you, Marika. Great presentation. So for folks uh, on the call, feel free to drop any questions that you have either in the chat or in the Q&A panel and we'll get to them. Um, Marika, I've got one to kick it off first. Yep. So, you know, in terms of, you mentioned defining scenarios, looking for opportunities to tell stories. How do you find these right opportunities? You know, when and where can I do this? Yes, I think that's a really good question because, um, yeah, as I was also kind of saying, it's it's not always the stage that you get, right? You you need to, I think, work with whatever reach you're, you're having as a product person. Um, so I think it is um, definitely a good idea to, again, if you, if you need to communicate certain things to make space for it and then to ask your team, okay, maybe we can have a session around this and I can shortly just run you through this to see what you have to say. Um, but of course, you should always try to, to make it as strategic as possible so that it doesn't become like an overhead or something that, again, another meeting that people have to listen to but that you kind of pitch it and frame it as something that will benefit everyone in the long run. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Great. Let's see if any other questions or I see a lot of um, lots of people saying that this was a great presentation, really clear and concise. I specifically love the examples that you put in the, the presentation as someone who's currently like working with product in terms of road mapping and we've got our upcoming kickoff. I'm sure this is very much top of mind for everyone, especially given the new year, thinking through the, the product strategy and how to communicate that. Um, all right, we've got a question here. How do, how do you persuade top management that storytelling is important? Hmm. I think that's, that's a good one as well. Um, I think it kind of goes together maybe with the other question, right? That I think storytelling is something that we use every day. And I think also in your organizations, you have these people that are really, really good at communicating, at presenting things. And usually there is some sort of or elements of storytelling with that, right? We want to um, either convince people of something or what I would always say, we want them to, to do something with the knowledge that we're getting here. And storytelling, as I said, is just one very, very good framework to do that. So um, I think it might be worth it to just have a very open conversation with, with management and also kind of try to explain that um, making people understand some of these things is, is quite a lot. Um, it's not that everyone understands exactly, again, what product does, what a roadmap is, why it should be important. So making it a little bit more familiar for people can really, really help in you being um, set up for success in the long run as well. Got it. Now that's great. Uh, we've got another question here. Any more advice on how to not go into too much detail? Yes, um, I think that's also good uh, because I've been there, um, both have, have done that myself, but also have been part of a lot of presentations. So I think, again, um, what I do, again, before doing this presentation is outline it. So I basically ask myself, what are the important parts that this presentation must have in order to convey this core message? Um, and then I sometimes try to bring in some anecdotes, again, some concrete examples, but I'm not trying to go into the details of how it worked, etc. So I think by trying to put everything into this outline framework, it already helps you to stick to kind of the, the major points you, you want to make. Got it. No, this is great. Another question. How to protect the team and maintain clarity when strategy is changing fairly often due to C-level stakeholders, despite my best efforts to keep it steady? <laughs> yes. So um, definitely feel that. I think it might be a whole other story, right, around um, business strategy, product strategy, etc. 
Um, but I think here it is then important to make sure, okay, when is it the right time to actually communicate the strategy, right? Um, is that something where we have buy-in from the most important people in the organization? And you can also ask them, I'm going to tell the story about this. Are we fine with doing that? Or do you think this is going to get changed anytime soon? Because then we might need to frame the product strategy differently, right? Um, then it's it might not be a strategy, but certain focus points that we're setting in a year or so. Um, but I think in order to, to kind of have that impact, it needs to be something that's worth telling a story. And if it's something that changes every month, um, then again, we might need a different format to, to communicate that. Yeah, I love that. I think timing is definitely everything as well. I uh, love these questions coming through. Keep keep sending them over. Um, Bo Eason shares his approach to storytelling, which leans into creating connection with your audience as a speaker. How do you see product managers to create deeper connections with their audiences, be it their teams, leadership, or their customers? Yes, I think it's very important. Um, so what I do, and it, it doesn't matter if I'm a product manager or a product leader, is trying to create connections by talking with people, by understanding their realities. What are their pain points? What kind of expectations do they have on me as product? Also, how do they perceive product? Um, and if I have already this kind of trust that I'm also investing some time in understanding how they're working, I think I'm in a better place to, to also make them understand certain concepts that are very, very important to us. And without them, we probably not be able to, to work ourselves. So I think by, by investing time up front uh, and understanding, same as with any uh, customer problem, also the problems of your internal stakeholders, um, I think you, you are guaranteed to have an easier time in, in telling these stories. Got it. Great question. Um, another one here. Can you think of easy or fun ways for someone to become familiar with or practice this storytelling process in their general life before jumping into doing it in a professional environment? Yes. Um, I mean, that's a good question. I was researching on this topic, of course, before I was doing this presentation. And I think there is some really nice resources out there. So one thing that I um, was diving into is also some um, Pixar animation movie makers talking about creating a good story, um, things that you definitely should not forget. There were some great tech uh, TED Talks on, on this. Um, so I can definitely recommend to maybe put this topic a little bit outside of the work context and see what else is out there. Because again, it's it's not just the work context that is important here, right? Um, storytelling very much important also for stand-up comedy, for example. So just trying to get inspired by by different other fields, I think, would make it maybe a little bit more easier or fun. That's awesome. That's great. Um, we've got another one here. How do you use storytelling when working with sales to help them be more effective? Yes. Sales, a very important stakeholder, not always easily convinced, um, but same, right? Like, I mean, I was trying to keep it quite open. I think um, the kind of like the examples that I put for communicating product ideas, um, but also the thing around um, discovery insights, I think something where storytelling helps a lot for sales. When it comes to the discovery insights, again, I think it is important that you tie it back to what is actually the outcome of this. Why are we doing the discovery and why is it beneficial also for sales that we're not just going with the first request that we're getting from this prospect, but that we're actually reflecting on what are their needs and their pain points first. Um, and then I think the same on, on the, the product ideas. Again, press release is something more commercial um, that puts it into a framework that can be easily understood also by sales. Got it. Yeah, I love that framework. Um, looks like we've got some suggestions as well in terms of other research to look into. This is great. I think a lot of people agree Pixar is awesome at storytelling. 
Speaking of additional resources, are there any additional resources you'd recommend on this topic? Yes. So, I mean, um, there are definitely some, some great thought leaders um, here. Um, one of um, a fellow German is also um, Petra Wille, um, who, who had a, um, a presentation on this at a Mind the Product conference or whatever. I can also really recommend that one um, because, yeah, it is very much tied to being a strong product leader product manager, product person, um, and again, not too much into the product marketing um, kind of niche to how do we communicate product externally, which is, of course, also a very important topic. Yeah. Got it. Great. Awesome. I think that's all of the questions that we have. Uh, thank you so much, Marika. Really enjoyed this conversation. Uh, really uh, loved the presentation. I think everyone here uh, found all of this content super valuable. So we hope to see you again at an upcoming event. Uh, in case you want to see what other events we have, please feel free to check out productboard.com slash events. And if you're not already part of the Product Maker Slack community, it's open to all passionate product makers. And it's a great place to discuss a variety of topics related to product management and to grow in your career. You can learn more about visiting productmakers.com Thank you again, Marika. Again, appreciate your time. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much for your time.